Welcome to week five, Transcultural Nursing. It's late July as I'm preparing these notes for our fall class and I'm reflecting on the past few months and all of the critical events that have shaped our lives and will continue to affect you as nursing students and soon to be RNs. We are living in the middle of a pandemic, facing something that the majority of people in the world have never had to face and we are struggling in lots of ways. But some members of our society are struggling more than others. One thing that has really been highlighted with this pandemic is the inequalities, racism, and discrimination that exists in Canadian society, as well as in the Canadian healthcare system. The gaps, the problems have been pushed to the forefront and it is impossible for our society to ignore. No matter where you work when you graduate, you will be working in systems in which biases are sometimes overt, but more often covert, so hidden at least to some extent, rather than being clear for all to see. As human beings, you will also have biases yourself, some of which you won't even be aware of. How you care for your patients will be affected by both the systemic biases and your own biases. Now more than ever, you need to work hard to ensure that you provide culturally appropriate care, that you at least minimize your own biases, and that you stand up against the injustices and discrimination that affect our society and our healthcare settings. You need to take to heart the CNAs and the CNOs positions about cultural competence in nursing and fully embrace that nurses have an obligation to address the many aspects of social justice that are associated with health and well-being. I can't move on to the rest of this class without talking a bit more specifically. It seems as if the phrase Black Lives Matters is everywhere today. And I know that some people get upset because they take it to mean that others are claiming that only Black Lives Matter. Yes, that is not the intent. Open your mind and understand that yes, all lives matter, but some people in our society are more at risk than others simply by virtue of the color of their skin or their ethnicity. Some people are afraid to drive a nice car because they might get pulled over by the police who think the car could be stolen just because a black person is driving. Many Indigenous people are living with a much poorer quality of life than non-Indigenous Canadians, and they live with the negative effects of racism and discrimination as their everyday reality. Other pe people face discrimination because of their religion or their sexual orientation and so on. We as a society have to do better. You as nursing students and then RNs can help make change happen. In this week's class, we will be exploring what it means to be a culturally competent nurse. You will be asked to think about your own practice and to reflect on what you do well and also what you could improve. Some of you may be living as members of a racialized or other cultural group and others may have had little to do with people that don't look or act like you. No matter what your experience is to date, I am demanding that you think seriously about how you can provide the best care to all your patients, regardless of ethnicity, race, gender, sex, religion, or any type of culture. I am demanding, not asking, because we can't let the current state of affairs continue. The way in which human beings view their world creates or is responsible for the perceptual filters through which they understand themselves and the other people within their world. Consequently, your worldview leads to actions and behaviors that reflect how you see the world. Too often, it also means acting based on stereotypes rather than on knowing an individual person as a fellow human being. A lot of what we are seeing today in society is a reflection of how various people view the world. For example, as some are unsafe if you don't fit with the dominant culture versus feeling threatened because the power you, you have held by virtue of being white is being challenged. Either position and anywhere in between can feel scary and emotions can be very strong. We need courage to face the darker sides of life and to learn about how other people perceive their reality. 
We need to think of everyone as a human being who deserves respect and kindness, kindness simply because they are human. As a theoretical stance, transcultural nursing strives to help nurses continuously develop their ways of being, no matter who the nurse is caring for, so that all patients, family members, and colleagues feel valued, respected, and heard. Rather than seeing someone as challenging based on difference, you can learn to appreciate the exciting opportunities you have to learn from someone else and to experience something new when you interact with someone who is different in some way from you. Nurses who use a transcultural nursing approach to guide their practice recognize that someone's culture can have an effect not only on how healthcare, healthcare providers might treat that person, but also on the person's risk for specific health conditions, such as hypertension in black women, and on the outcomes of healthcare, such as the varying effects of common drugs that are dependent on gender or race. A transcultural nursing approach encourages and guides you to learn about various cultural practices and to find ways to accommodate cultural practices into your care as appropriate. For example, when a patient requests a ceremony that is important to them. It also reminds you to be aware of tokenism, so to not assume you understand patients' and families' unique cultural needs based on your previous exposure to members of the same cultural group even though that exposure may have been limited or superficial. When you come from a place of cultural humility, then you are most likely to be open and willing to learn from other people without trying to impose your own perspective. And as a side note, this is very important when I travel to Ghana. And for those of you that don't know of my mission work, I've been traveling to Northern Ghana for the last eight years. And taking a transcultural nursing approach is absolutely imperative because I don't understand this culture. I don't understand why they make decisions that they make. Some decisions I think are wrong, but when you hear their explanation, they're completely correct on, from their point of view. So very important to develop this transcultural point of view. The theory of cultural humility is composed of four concepts. Cultural desire is the natural motivation or desire that inspires people to learn about cultures other than their own. Cultural sensitivity is about having an awareness of your own cultures as well as the cultures of others. It is what allows you to consider the key differences between you and others so you can deliberately accept those differences and respect the other person which is needed in order to build good rapport with another person. Note that you also need to determine similarities, not just differences. At our basic essence, human beings tend to be more alike than dissimilar. Cultural competence is about having and using sufficient cultural knowledge so that you can nurse anyone and everyone. And in the way that the other person wants to be nursed because you respect the other person's values and traditions. Cultural humility is about being humble, so not full of pride or arrogance. It is a place from which you can be open to learning where you value every person being simply because they are human beings, regardless of how similar or dissimilar they are to yourself. So cultural humility is a process of self-reflection and self-critique that takes place during multicultural encounters and that leads to acceptance and respect of other cultural backgrounds. It means you need to be continually asking yourself, is what, I am, is what I am doing working well? Can I do anything different to best meet the needs of this patient? What have I learned from this encounter that I can incorporate into my practice? What should I not do in the future? And what did not work well? Cultural humility is necessary in every interaction you have as a nurse with your patients, their families, and your colleagues. Without cultural humility, it is not possible to achieve cultural competence. There are four characteristics of cultural competence. Cultural awareness starts with you exploring your own culture and personal biases, stereotypes, etc. 
because you can only better understand other cultural groups if you first understand your own cultural values, beliefs, practices, etc. Awareness is about making conscious what is likely subconscious so that your nursing decisions, actions, etc. are intentional and chosen in a way that reflect a recognition of cultural similarities and differences among patients and a valuing of the influence that culture has on health. Cultural sensitivity requires that you feel comfortable with cultural diversity and both appreciate and respect cultural differences. As I said already, you cannot assume that everyone is the same. You also need to move away from ethnocentrism, so the belief that in the inherent superiority of your own ethnic group or culture and a tendency to view other groups or cultures, cultures from the perspective of your own. You need to understand that no one culture is better than another. Further, you need to be careful that you don't judge other people's behavior by your own cultural values, otherwise transcultural issues and conflicts are likely to arise. Cultural knowledge. You need a solid educational base about various cultural groups so you can then better understand different values, beliefs, and behaviors. You must have a general cultural knowledge to help you know what to do and what not to do. For example, how to greet a patient, the type of diet that the patient might need, the type of communication that might be comfortable for the patient. The general knowledge you have about a culture is important, but also insufficient. Just as with any theory, you also need to pay attention to the context and to your specific patient. So you will need to find out what is important for that patient and not make assumptions. Cultural skill is about your ability to not only perform a strong cultural assessment that collects relevant cultural data from the patient, but also to accurately use the data in planning and providing care in a culturally sensitive way. So you need patient input to determine the right plan. You need effective communication skills, both verbal and nonverbal, and at times you may need an interpreter. You need to know about and use resources that provide the facts in culturally appropriate ways. To provide optimal culturally sensitive nursing care, you first need to be well aware of your own biases and prejudices. It is important that you do a cultural self-assessment so you can identify your own areas of challenge and you can then consciously work to prevent possible prejudice and discrimination from affecting the care you give to patients. When you are using a cultural assessment approach with your patients, you need to be very careful that you do not make assumptions. For example, rather than offer closed option choices as answers to a question or asking questions that seem meaningful from your perspective, you need to ask open-ended questions that allow the patient to tell you, without any constraints, what they value, what they want. Accommodating for your patient's cultural needs or requests means that you must pay attention to what is important to the patient and find ways to fit your care around what the patient needs. For example, does a shower really need to be given at the time when the patient usually says their prayers? As you show as you should know from your nursing education so far, interventions work best when the patient is involved in developing the intervention. So make sure that you listen to your patients and incorporate their values, beliefs, etc. into planned interventions. So coming up will be our week five Zoom meeting on Tuesday, October the 20th from three to four, and we will have a discussion on transcultural nursing. See you then.